John, certainly not the conversation that we were expecting to have. We would have been looking forward to a post-match after a riveting derby and it was the atmosphere was building and indeed raging there. Yeah. And then physically the lights went out. What's what's the experience from in the dressing room and roundabout for yourself? Yeah, well we had done the warm-up, went back in and when we were in the process of getting the last moments in preparation, then the lights went out in the dressing room. At that point we just thought it was maybe within the building. But when we came out and had a little look, we knew that the, the third lights were off as well. And the information we were getting wasn't that great. However, the, the, the lights went back on. So it was game on. The, the linesmen came down and said, right guys, we're, we're ready to go. And we came out and obviously the, the game started, as uh, everyone knows. And uh, yeah, you're right, the atmosphere was great. And I thank the, the Race Rovers fans for turning up tonight and uh, and making their, their self heard. You know, it was great noise. The young team, you know, magnificent, the whole... The whole Stand absolutely fantastic. Uh, um, I'm very sorry for you that the game was cut short. Uh, it was out with our control. So as the game was going ahead, the security got in contact with the fourth official to speak to the referee, and the message came from the match commander that there was no electricity in either of the two stands, and there was no CCTV, and that was a, a health hazard. And he said that the game had to be abandoned. Uh, the referee wanted to hear that from the match commander. He heard it from the match commander, and that was when he finally blew the whistle on, on the game. But he brought myself and Peter Grant together and said, if you want to speak to your players, this, this is the situation, situation that I've just uh, just said. If you want to get your players across, and then I'll hear it right from the match commander, and then we'll have to pull the plug in it. Uh, so, again, apologise to everyone who turned up tonight, uh, expecting 90 minutes and more of action, and unfortunately we've only had about 15 minutes. There's not really much more I feel I like can ask you, John, because it's about what happens next. I guess it's about just letting the dust settle and um, it goes to the hands of the league officials to see when the game will be replayed, yeah. what the next arrangements will be. We have to, as a football club, find out the issues. That's why, you know, the, the lights went out and uh, the, there was lights in the stand and the electricity to the stand. Both stands couldn't go back on again. So there has to be an, inv an investigation, you know, amongst ourselves to to find out why that was and uh, obviously put that right. And then, yes, uh, we we'll need to wait in the SPFL and see when, we, when we're going to play this game again. You take the opportunity now to do a bit of a session with your boys? Uh... We have to do something, David. Yeah, we have to do something. You know, we've, you know, we've, we're playing on the Sunday. We were a bit late, you know, in our preparation and you, you couldn't do an awful lot. So we need to work tonight. We need to go and do a little bit now. The floodlights lights are on and we can train. And we need to train because we were, we were prepared for to have Saturday and Sunday off. But we're going to work hard now and that will uh, make up for the loss of the game. And we'll be ready to go next week when we're, we'll travel down to air. We always always catch up with you through the week and um, this bizarre evening that has been, well, um, hopefully you'll get some extra fitness out of the, the thing. But I think fans uh, lose the most, one, really. one good piece of news, maybe everyone's seen that Lewis Vaughan was on the bench tonight. So it's great news for Lewis, great news for everyone concerned with, with Lewis and Wraith Rovers Football Club. He was seen Mr Keatings today and he was told that, you know, it's kind of like 50-50. He, he can carry on in maybe six weeks, six months, you know, down the line. Maybe that would go. But in the meantime, he had uh, the go-ahead to, to carry on. And as long as he's... Lewis is feeling fine. He was feeling fine. And Lewis is very much wanting to go ahead. But if the worst came to the worst, uh, you know, it, it would just be a little tidy up and maybe a little operation, a little keel surgery, a six weeks kind of thing. So it's nothing major, he's been reassured that his knee is very strong, the operations had in the past, there's nothing wrong there, everything is is, uh, is very you know, together and solid and strong. Uh, and so he, he got the go-ahead and we had him on the bench tonight and uh, you know, he'll do a little bit of training now. So great news, great news and hopefully it's news that, uh, you know, hopefully it's something that doesn't reoccur. Good to see um, Ross Matthews uh, lining up again today. A particularly good game on Sunday. He feeling strong? Yeah, the next one game on Sunday. You know, it's like turning the tap on. Eh? You didn't realise until you, you know, got them that you realise how important they are to you. You know, players like Ross Matthews. You know, if you go home and your water's known, you, you realise how much you miss it. You know, it's the same like with guys like Ross Matthews and Brad. And, you know, you miss them when they know they are. You know, people have got to come in and step into their shoes and, and do the job. And more often than not, that's what happens, you know. But, yeah, it's great to see Ross. Ross would benefit from that game, as I said last week. Another week of training, and he's ready to go. Thanks, as always, for your time, John. Thank you. Cheers.